Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kayla and today vlogmas day seven. If you notice, we skipped day six because I got way behind on orders and my videos and everything. So I posted day five on day six and today's December 7th. So we're just gonna skip six altogether. Just go straight to vlogmas day seven and pretend like we were able to uh, do vlogmas correctly. <laughs> so today I'm gonna talk to you about some tips that I have for embroidery beginners. Now this isn't for like embroidery business beginners. This is just purely embroidery, machine embroidery in and of itself, beginner tips. Now this is not an exhaustive list. I'm sure there's many things that I'm gonna forget to say um, or not include. So this is purely just things that I sat down, thought about, and wrote down. They are not in any particular order. So take that for what it's worth. So uh, my first tip, whether you are a brand new person to embroidery or you've done it for just a little while, no matter what kind of machine you have, whether it's a sewing machine embroidery combo that can only do four by four designs, or if it's a large commercial machine, no matter what, one of the first things that you need to take note of and think about is what kind of stabilizer do you need for whatever garment you're trying to embroider on. Having the correct stabilizer is huge and absolutely imperative to having a crisp quality design on your garment. Are you doing a stocking where you can just use sticky stabilizer on the eight in one device? Are you floating it? Are you, is it really thin and you need cutaway stabilizer? Is it a sweater you, where you need like a poly mesh cutaway stabilizer? Do you need tender touch? Do you need water soluble stabilizer for the top? These are all different things that you need to know before you begin your project so that your, your garment can come out correctly. If you use tearaway on something like a cuffed beanie, that image is gonna get distorted because they're stretched. You have to use cutaway so that the stitches stay in place. So think about what garment you're putting your design on. Think about how much is gonna get worn, the stress of stretching, washing, things like that. Think about the method that you're using. If you're using the eight in one device, you have to use the sticky tearaway stabilizer, things like that. So research the different stabilizers, think about your garment, think about how dense your design is also, that's also a big factor, and then go from there. So make sure you're using the correct stabilizer. Tip number two would be to have different inexpensive blanks that you can practice on. Go get a cheap shirt from Walmart and use the entire thing for different embroidery designs or sublimation designs or vinyl designs. Whatever you want to do, do a test on it first and use just that one shirt. If you're doing a pocket size logo, multiple of them, you have an entire shirt where you can test on that fabric or get a cheap towel from the dollar store, or a hat from the dollar store, a tote from the dollar store. Dollar store actually has a lot of different blanks and textiles that you can practice on. They have some great sublimation items that you can practice on. You know, places like uh, like Five Below and things like that, places like that have cheap hats, cheap beanies, cheap backpacks that you can practice on and get really, really good at. And another tip that I had later on that I'll just insert in here now is if you want to feel like you're not wasting thread, wasting stabilizer, wasting uh, even, even adhesive spray, if you want to feel like you're not wasting it, you can still use a blank to practice on. And if it comes out great, don't use that for subsequent tests, gift that to somebody. So you could do that too if you want if you don't want to feel like you're just wasting an item or wasting thread. Because I felt like that too on some really, you know, like intricate designs that have multiple colors. I'm like, gosh, this is a lot of thread and I really don't want to waste it. I'll start it on its own beanie or whatever. And then if it turns out great, gift it to somebody or keep it for myself or whatever. So that's another option too, is to gift what you're testing out. So tip number four that I have would be to buy the bulk cases of embroidery thread on Amazon. I think the brand is called Bro Thread. I will leave it linked down below. It comes with like, some of them come with like 80 different colors, 40 different colors, things like that. I have used those myself on my EM1010 and even on, on this guy so far. And they've been great. 
Now there are small spools. I forget off the top of my head how many yards they are. They're smaller spools, but they are great to start out on. They are great for when you're just beginning. They fit great on the PE 800 if that's what you're starting out on because they are smaller cones. And it's just a great, in my opinion, a great thread to start out with before you go ahead and buy the big expensive, you know, 5,500 yard cones that sometimes are $10 a cone. So for, uh, I think sometimes they're like 40 bucks, you can get like, you know, what, 40 packs, 80 packs, 60 packs of different colors. So I would absolutely start with getting those different threads and practicing with those first before you upgrade to the big like Madeira and candle cones. Tip number five would be before you go to places like Etsy and spend three, four, sometimes five dollars for an embroidery design, go to the big bundle places like Creative Fabrica, Design Bundles, EmbroideryDesigns.com and see what they offer in terms of like a monthly subscription or is their free trials. Check out places like that first before you shell out you know, $50 in one Etsy, Etsy shopping binge on just a few embroidery designs. Because I know myself can spend, you know, $40 just in one Etsy shop because the designs are, you know, $5 a piece. So that gives me eight embroidery designs, which sounds great. I mean, eight embroidery designs is a lot, but I can go over to a place like Creative Fabrica and for $19 a month with an all access subscription, I can download any design I want, no limits whatsoever for $20 a month. So that in my opinion is a way better deal and I think will save so much money in the long run, especially if you're just starting out practicing because there's some times where like I have bought so many children's designs and guess what? I don't do kids clothes anymore. So now all of those designs I don't want to say are wasted but are just taking up space on my hard drive. So if you start out on a place like creativefabricut.com that has designs for every season, designs for just about anything that you could ever want, um, you know, save for some of the applique designs that you see on Etsy for the kids shirts. Some of those you do have to buy on Etsy. Um, but if you're doing kitchen towels, if you're doing beanies, if you're doing, um, if you're doing shirts, if you're doing fun seasonal decor, places like Creative Fabric are great for that. And again, even if you're just testing your new machine out, testing your skills, seeing what stabilizer to use, seeing what works with, with your machine and your process and everything, I think places like that are a great place to start out before you shell out a lot of money just on one Etsy visit. Okay, tip number six I think we're on would be to make sure you have the correct supplies on hand. Now I don't, I'm not saying go and spend a hundred dollars and make sure you have all the embroidery supplies that you've seen any YouTuber ever use. Just have enough of the basics on hand to be able to get your feet wet, to be able to do multiple items at a time, not have to stop, run to Walmart, you know, yada, yada, yada. Make sure you have enough bobbins. Make sure you have enough thread for your project. Make sure you have enough stabilizer. Make sure if you're floating something, you have spray adhesive because that's important. Make sure if you're doing something textured, you have water soluble stabilizer. Make sure you have those things on hand before you start your project or before you start multiple projects to have a seamless test process because you don't, you don't want to try something new and then feel defeated because you didn't have all the right steps and then you lose motivation and then you don't want to try again. I've been there. I'm speaking from experience. It's a lot harder to gain confidence in what you're doing if you don't set yourself up for success beforehand. You know, think about if you're doing applique, do you have heat and bond for the back of that fabric? Do you have a mighty hoop for a thick Carhartt jacket that you want to use? Things like that are going to be imperative to set yourself up for success in learning what you're doing. Because there is a learning curve to embroidery. Absolutely 100%. I started out on a PE 800, I think three years ago, and it's taken me three years to get something like this. Now other people, it's taken them, you know, no time at all to pick it up and upgrade and build a business and things like that. For me, it's taken a little bit longer. And there's nothing wrong with that. We all learn at different speeds. We all pursue our business at different speeds. You know, and I have a new, I'm going to have a video coming out later on in Vlogmas about like embroidery business tips, basically saying like, don't do what I did. Um, because I, I can look back at my journey to where I am now and see so many things that I did wrong, so much time wasted. So I'm going to share all that with you pretty soon. So I hope that, you know, this video and that video is going to help you guys 
in your journey too. Okay, my next tip is to watch videos, watch videos, watch videos. I'm hoping that you're watching this video because you have seen my other ones and value what I have to say. Now, I'm not saying I know it all because I don't by any means. I am just a tiny little voice here on YouTube. There are much bigger creators, much more successful creators, but I hope that you're here because you have learned something from one of my other videos and want to learn even more. And I hope that I continue to have something to offer you. I truly, truly do. There are so many other embroidery content creators that I have gained so much value from, so much valuable information that you just, you can't put a price on. I mean, some, there's some tips and tricks and how to's that people offer that some people pay big buku bucks to learn how to do. And there's people like me and other creators that just want to share what we know. And so just a few of them off the top of my head, this is not all of them by any means, be people like Romero Threads, um, Ada Productions, Lori Nunemaker, Nita Fajita, Angela Jasmina, uh, Heart and Hustle Printing, Katrina's Graceful Creations. Th that is seriously just a small, small handful of people that I watch and am subscribed to that I have learned so much valuable information from. So I encourage you to look through other people's videos. Don't get in just a certain like echo chamber, if you will, of people who do the same embroidery things that you do watch people who do just hats, watch people who have a large scale brick and mortar, watch people who, um, you know, are just starting out. You can learn so many different things from, from people who are at different levels. So don't be afraid to watch other people's videos, even though it's not in the baby blanket market or, you know, things like that. So watch videos, watch videos, watch videos. And the last tip that I'm going to have for you today is don't be afraid to mess up. Don't be afraid to break a needle. Don't be afraid to break thread. Don't be afraid to use the wrong stabilizer. Don't be afraid to try to float something and not have to hoop it because it's too thick or whatever. See if it works. See what works for you. See what doesn't work. You're going to find that different things work for different people. You're going to watch somebody on YouTube and say, well, how come it worked for them, but it's not working for me? Figure it out. Don't be afraid to test new things, try new textiles, try new methods. See what works for you. And I guarantee you, you're going to find something that works for you that you've never seen anybody do and just say like, well, it's working and I'm just going to leave it how it is because it's working for me and I'm not going to try to do it, you know, this way, X, Y, and Z that somebody else did because this is what's working for me and I'm just going to run with it. Don't be afraid to do that. Don't be afraid to mess up. Don't be afraid to fail because you don't know what's going to work for you and what's not going to work for you until you try it. So that is the final tip that I'm going to leave with you guys today is just don't be afraid. Like I said, it's taken me a few years to get to this point and I'm still very small scale, but I do still have big dreams to be a large scale operation. Um, if you guys watched my video when I unboxed my TC, I have a goal at the end of 2023 to have the need for a multi-head, not just have a multi-head because anybody can go and have a multi-head, but have a need for a multi-head have such a successful business that I can't do business without it. So that is my current goal right now. And it is absolutely terrifying. Um, I'm actually thinking about doing another vlogmas video about things about business that terrify me, things about running a business that scare me. So if you're interested in that, leave me a comment down below and I'll, I'll seriously consider putting that vulnerable video out <laughs> uh, because it is, it's terrifying to tell people what you're scared of. It's terrifying to put yourself out there and uh, showcase your fears and things like that. It's scary. So anyways, like I said, this is absolutely not an exhaustive list whatsoever. I'm sure there's things that I've missed. If you have tips for embroidery beginners, leave it down in the comments below. I love learning from other people and I know other people read my comments, so maybe you can help somebody out too. Um, otherwise, I will see you guys tomorrow for Vlogmas Day 8.